Hello and welcome to Sudocode. In today's video, we are going to talk about singleton design pattern. We will see an introduction to the problem that is solved using singleton design pattern. Then we will go through an analogy for the same. I am also going to tell you the difference between eager loading versus lazy loading, while also explaining how you can apply thread safety when you are implementing singleton design pattern. Then we will see a code walkthrough demo, and then finally end the video with summary and pros and cons. So let's get started. When we were learning about design patterns, we understood that design patterns usually solve some kind of problem. The problem that singleton design pattern solves is this. Whenever you need only one instance of a class or a shared resource across your application, how do you achieve that or how do you do that? You have to allow the access to that instance from the whole application, but also you don't need a new instance every time. You only need that one instance which could be utilized across the whole application. If you try to visualize it, it will look something like this, that you have a particular instance or a shared resource and it is accessed by different app modules or different programs or sub-programs in your application. The examples of such instances or shared resources could be DB connection or a logger instance or the runtime class in Java. One can argue that you can solve this problem just by saving that instance in a global variable and allow access from different application modules or different programs in the same application to that global variable. Let's say we do that. We save the logger instance in a global variable and allow access from different application modules to read that variable. It is fine as long as different application modules are reading that variable. But what if one particular application module tries to write over that variable or overwrite it? In that case, this value gets changed to something else. And here is the problem that now that value is no longer same. But you needed that same value to be accessed by all the resources and not modified. Because it was a global variable, it can be overwritten or it can be modified. That is why we cannot use a global variable. Hence. The problem arises that how do we protect this variable? Here is how you protect it. You try to initialize that variable using a private constructor and you don't allow anyone else the access to that constructor. You only allow to the access to that variable by using a getter. This is how the class diagram of a singleton pattern looks. That you have a singleton class. It has just one and only one instance of singleton, which by the way is private. The constructor which initializes this particular instance that is also private. The only thing which is public and the other app modules have access to is this getter function which is going to return this particular instance here. This is how you ensure that all your application modules have access to the same instance and also none of them can modify this instance. They only can get it. Let's try to understand this more using an analogy. A good example of a singleton is a prime minister's calendar. The whole country has just one prime minister and that one prime minister just has one calendar. Everybody wants access to that calendar so that they can schedule some slot with the prime minister for their meetings. If you will give new instances of this calendar to everybody who needs access, they will be able to override it if you are, if you are giving them a direct access. Instead of, of that, if the personal assistant of the prime minister has access to this calendar and everybody else has access to this personal assistant. So this personal assistant is actually like that getter function. Using the communication via this personal assistant, you can get your slot scheduled on the prime minister's calendar, but you don't have the direct access to the PM's calendar. You can only read from it or request the personal assistant to allow some slot on it, but you cannot modify it directly. Hence, this is the global resource which is shared by different people, but they cannot modify it. They can only read it via the PA. A few important things to note in this pattern is that you should never make your singleton class accept a parameter. If you do that, it becomes a factory. And hence, you should always avoid doing that. If you see anywhere a singleton being used with a parameter, that means it's a violation, it's an anti pattern, and actually it is a factory and not a singleton. Now, let's talk about eager versus lazy loading. Eager loading means that you already initialize the instance and always return it. Basically, whenever your application starts, your instance is already initialized. Lazy loading is that whenever your application is initialized, the singleton instance is not initialized. It is initialized only when someone invokes it or tries to uh, read it or get it. Now, what is the use of doing so? 
in case of eager loading what happens is even if you create that instance or initialize that instance when the application fires up if nobody needs it it will just keep lying around and utilize memory whereas if you do lazy loading then you just keep the singleton class but you don't initialize the instance when an application module tries to access that instance at that time you check if the instance is available or not if not you create a one if it's already available you just return the same instance that way you try to have some kind of optimization in your application if your application has just one singleton class then it's fine to do the eager loading but if it has multiple singleton classes then you might be saving a lot of memory by following the lazy loading let's try to look at the code where we are going to demonstrate how to create a singleton class and we will also see the examples of eager versus lazy loading and we will also see how do we make our classes thread safe Let's try to see a demo of singleton design pattern using the code here. I have defined a class logger singleton. It has just one instance. And as you can see that it is a static and it is also private. Also, there is a constructor which is private. So nobody can call this constructor. And then there is one getter function, get instance, which returns this instance. So as you can see here that the instance gets initialized here and it is just written in this get instance function. If you try to go back to the demo, you can just see that I am calling singleton object here using logger singleton dot get instance and then I am printing it out. For the first run, let's just comment out these lines and see what is the response that we get. If I run this particular class, as you can see, in the output we are going to get this object. Now, let's go ahead and uncomment this code. From the principle of singleton, we should get the same object in singleton object 2 as well because it has to return us the same instance. Let's go ahead and run that as well. As you can see, we get the same object. Now, if we go back to the singleton class, this is a very basic implementation. It is not thread safe and also this is the example of eager loading because the instance is already getting initialized. Now. First, let's try to understand how to write the code for lazy loading. We have already discussed that in case of lazy loading, we have to initialize the instance only if it is not initialized because we don't have to initialize it from the starting itself. I have written the code for the same here. I am just going to copy paste it so that you don't have to see me typing and wait around. And here we are just going to replace this with null. So when the application starts, the instance is null, but when the first call for get instance happens, we check if the instance is null or not. In the first call, this will be null and we will initialize it. However, in the second call, this will not be null and we can just return the same instance. If we go back to the demo and try to run our code, we are still going to get the same object for both the calls, as you can see here. So this was the example of lazy loading. Now, as we discussed that thread safety is really important in case of singleton implementation. Let's see how we can implement thread safety. Again, for thread safety, I have the code copied here, but I'm going to run through it one by one for you so that you can understand what we are doing here. Let's try to replace it and remove this part. Okay, so as you can see here that we have made this particular instance as volatile. Volatile is a keyword in Java which makes the changes or the threads which are accessing this particular variable visible. If you don't know about the volatile keyword, I have attached a link in the description. You can just go and read about it. Now, in the constructor of this class, we have made a check here. Now, some of you might be wondering why we have made this check in the constructor itself because constructor is private so who will access it there is a way to access this by using reflection and this is what we are avoiding here we are avoiding anyone to use reflection to utilize this particular constructor and we are checking if the instance is null we throw a runtime exception now how do we make sure that after uh, attaching this keyword volatile here how can we make sure that uh, we have the logic which is safe for different threads to access in order to do that we would have to use the keyword synchronized. Now let's see how to do that. 
some of you may argue that we could have utilized the synchronized keyword at class level you may know that synchronized keyword can be utilized at class level or at the block level but we have decided to use the synchronized keyword at the block level because we don't want to block at the class level the only difference is that we are going to check the nullability of instance two times here this is for the first time call and whenever we are doing uh, synchronized when we are adding this block here at that time also we are checking if the instance is null or not this particular code block will ensure that no two threads are initializing the instance at the same time because they will be blocked and they will wait for each other to unblock and get their turn and then execute the code this is a very simple implementation on how to make your singleton class thread safe if we go back and try to run the demo again you will see that there is absolutely no difference and it runs as it was running before. So that was the code walkthrough and now let us understand different pros and cons of using the singleton design pattern. Singleton design pattern is a very neat and clean way to handle access to the shared global resource. It is also easy to implement and it guarantees that you have one and only one instance. Also, this pattern solves a very well defined problem. However, just with every other pattern, there are some cons as well. Sometimes people tend to overuse or abuse the singleton pattern a lot. You should try not doing that or you should try to avoid that. Just try to understand using the analogy if the instance or the shared resource that you want to make a singleton, if it is really a global resource or if it if the problem gets solved really by using the singleton design pattern and just don't overuse it. Also, never ever use it with a parameter and confuse it with the factory pattern. Sometimes it can be hard to write test or unit test for the singleton design pattern. Also, if you forget to use the thread safety mechanisms, then it can be dangerous for your application because multiple threads can read from your singleton class and it can result in inconsistent behavior. So this point is very important to keep in mind. So guys, that was singleton design pattern. If there are any doubts or any questions, please feel free to leave them in comments. I'm going to add some links in the description. Please check them out as well. Till then, take care. See you in the next video.